Hey everyone, I think we can get started here. Welcome to the morning meeting. It is January the 18th, 2024. I'm still looking at this from yesterday. You might remember that yesterday's live trading session, which I uploaded, um, I had shown this, this butterfly and I was also very busy at the open looking at this reversal right here. Yesterday I said I cannot really find a good entry. The risk was still fairly fairly large. So I passed on that. But as you can see, the um, pattern, the harmonic pattern here came to full fruition. Right? So not so much in the session yesterday, but then overnight, today in pre-market, it really took off. And it already took out the high right here. So technically, this this harmonic pattern is now done. Um, can price still go higher? Possible, um, especially when you have those larger patterns. They you know might give you more follow through, but that is still something that I don't want to put a number on in terms of probabilities. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's just what it is. So this pattern has been completed, so to say. And what is there to learn from this? Well, yesterday, fairly significant pre-market move. The NQ was almost down, or I think it was down 1.5% down here, which for me, and I mentioned it in yesterday's session multiple times, is usually a no-go for any long trades. But obviously, one can be wrong and things can indeed start turning around. The really, really interesting thing about this is, though, if you look at this in a little bit more detail, you can see that we are at the 1414 trigger level. You could also look at the 1272 level for a trigger. You also had this um, horizontal line here. I think that was from a previous daily low. So things were kind of coming together here, as I illustrated yesterday as well. Now, how do I try to stay away from early entries? Um, if I'm just looking here on a five-minute chart for a green candle and have the high taken out, I do get a situation like that here. But at that point, price has never touched any of these levels. Plus, I really like to wait to hit 1414 rather than 1272. So there's no trade entry here. But then when we touch the level, the horizontal coming across from the daily low, the 1272, then we just wait for the first green candle to close. And the very next candle needs to take out the high of that green candle. That is exactly what happened here? There's your green candle. We touched all these levels. First green candle. And here's the follow through. Price then comes back a little bit in here. That's fine. For all those guys who after two green candles already think they can move the stop, they take them out here. But the more interesting thing is later in the day, they retest this exact entry. So let me just draw that here. This is the follow through level. Sorry use this. This is the exact follow-through level and look what they do. To the pixel they get back into this into this level. Right? So if you bought the uh, follow-through at what was that 16, 733, 75 then your high is 16, 7, sorry your low is 16, 733, 25. Right? So you can see how the market comes back to retest and everybody also might have had a later entry somewhere around here whenever they made up their minds everybody got taken out who moved the stop too early and there's nobody to blame to do it because it was a chopped session yesterday it was just swinging around we didn't really know if it would be holding holding up um, and so people get nervous and they start moving stocks around, uh, stops around right so this is just something to learn and to keep in mind if if you really you know, if you're really, really in for a proper move, the market tends to retest such entry points. Okay.
So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to clean up a little bit. I'm going to get rid of this harmonic, of these levels. I'm actually going to start at the S again. I've already checked the, um, the daily chart in terms of, you know, any gaps or anything. Um, and then one more thing to, to mention, we had the building permits come out. Uh, there's really nothing much going on here. I mean, yes, the market has been moving like 10 points over the last little while, but this is not really something that I am I would be very interested in. Let's just see how they were. The permits were a little bit higher than expected, and that's it, right? Housing starts a little bit higher than expected. Had some initial jobless claims um, coming out. They're actually a little bit lower. So the job market is still in full swing, but we know that already. And the rest of the day, this is all energy related stuff. And two Fed talks here and some bill auctions. And that's pretty much it. And then tomorrow, consumer sentiment is, is on the board, right? Okay, so let's just go, let, let me just go to a weekly chart real quick. So this is what we have done so far this week. Last week, um, we took out the high of this red candle. That's a sign, potential sign for trend continuation. So there is, there is a bullish theme here in the market. And what we have seen overnight, especially in the NQ, just going all the way up, that is indeed one of those themes. You can see that here. That's the NQ, right? So that's what that is. The YM hasn't really done much. The YM is actually weakening. And um, it is actually giving us a follow through in the YM to the downside. If you look at this closely, there's a swing high to the left. There's a, there's a lower high to the right. There's a lower high. And now here, maybe without the drawings, it's easier to see. This is a swing high, lower high, lower high. And then here, follow through as of this week. This is bearish in my book, right? This is bearish in my book. Whereas the NQ, taking out the high of this red candle, suggesting some trend continuation. The S has done that too. What about the Russell? The Russell has put in a swing high, just like the Dow. It did not have immediate follow through, but we have to follow through now. So it also doesn't look that great at the moment. Okay. So what can we um, deduct from this whole thing? Right now, it's potentially a market where a little bit more risk might be sought, um, even though yesterday the China stocks, for example, didn't have a very good day. So it's it's a bit mixed, right? And we're obviously splitting those indexes in, into two groups, ES and Q on one side, looking more bullish, YM, RTY on the other side, looking a bit more bearish. At the end of the day, some adjustments have to be made and some atonement has to be um, reached at some point but things can always go differently for a while so for example if you look at um, the ratio between the nasdaq and the dow so this, these are the q's etf diamond etf you can see the q's were very strong all of last year and we are still in a sideways range now so things can be chopping around and we don't know if that's just a consolidation and might get more strength in, in growth or if this is going to break to to the downside maybe just temporarily something like that could happen as well and that's what the story is since i already have this open here let's just take a look at some daily statistics these are typical um, thresholds here these orange lines when the number of stocks that's trading above um, the uh, 50, it is, sorry, the 20, do, 20 day moving average, um, you know, when they are swinging or are above to in a considerable, considerable amount, like 90% of stocks are here above the, the 20 simple moving average. Um, right now, we only have 28% above it, right? And we're still weakening here, okay? You can do the same exercise with the 50 day moving average also starting to turn there are less stocks now than 
just a few days or a week or two weeks ago that are actually defending um, their price above the 50-day moving average. And then also you can see that the 200-day moving average is also starting to weaken a little bit. But still about two-thirds of the S&P 500 stocks are still above the 200 simple moving average. Right? And obviously you will get swings here way more often in the, tw in the 20 moving average and in the 50 than in the 200. And what typically happens is if you want to, you know, concentrate on, on swings and stuff like that, you want to see, you know, this, this level being reached down here. And then you can start looking more closely to swing lows on, on the daily chart in the indexes. You can uh, look at some sentiment out there, etc. I mean, things can stick to these limits, to these levels, um, just like in any oscillator, right? So they, they were sticking here, right? They were sticking up there, they were sticking down here. So this is not a recipe for an immediate reverse, right? You have to keep that in mind. So you still need to return back to your technical charts of your indexes and then look at signals there that you might want to follow or might want to try. Okay, let's go back to the futures. Uh, yes, okay, so we looked at the weeklies. We know what, what we're dealing with. Let's take a look at the dailies per se. And um, yeah, potential swing high here as well, but you know, a lot of wicks, all this stuff has to be taken into consideration as well. But it's it's also swing high here. And Q, not so much, right? So we are quite aggressively coming back and it's more of a, of a sideways move. And then here, obviously, you see the weakness in Dow and Russell again. So I, I've looked for those daily gaps, as I said, so we are good there. So now we can just look at hourly charts and segment this off into the individual trading days. And obviously, what we want to do is we want to get our extension levels um, and everything here in the middle doesn't really matter. We touch 618 or 50%. It doesn't matter which way you, you draw this. this. This is not relevant for today. What is relevant for today is obviously the 1272 up here because this also happens to be a daily high. So we are going to put a alert here. I'm actually wondering if I have more alerts still set, but I think that's the only one right now here in the ES. I have to look out for those and the other indexes. Um, if we break down here, there isn't really that much to do. There's not much of a confluence here, right? So not that interesting. I I doubt we're gonna make such a huge move down today. Um, so just not not gonna look at it that much. So that's one level. Um, and I always try to figure out do we have any harmonics here on, on the daily chart. That's that's not really the case. But one thing that could be interesting is obviously this run up. So we started the trend here. And now we are sitting, we were sitting there and then you know, the price started reversing. And for that, we should take a look at where the 618 is. And you can see the 618 here, even though the, the one from yesterday, I'm not really interested in, they're fairly close together, right? So the, the 618 here is a little bit lower. It's actually this lower red um, line right here. And it also takes us below this, this level. I need to check what that is. So I'm going to put an alert here as well. And this is still a low from here, but Go back to a daily chart. No, we still have not covered that low. So that's I'm looking at the right thing. Yes, we still have not covered that that low here. So this might be of some interest as another bounce level. However, if we come if we come all the way back up to the low of the day, basically chances that we're going to push up again might not be that that great we'll see what happens so those are two levels um, that are i guess somewhat interesting 
You could also try to work with 50% um, here because we have a low there. Um, so maybe I'm just going to put another alert. And I would really favor the 618. Really favor that one. Let me just see. This is from Thursday the 11th. This is the one down here. Um, started covering that today. No, I think I'm, 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 I'm not going to keep that level here. It's difficult. No, I, I think I get rid of it. Might be wrong, but we'll see. Okay, um, that's pretty much it for the ES. Then let's check line chart. We don't know if this is going to hold. There's nothing yet. Okay, then Q. Hourly chart as well. This is a bit more interesting because here we could still come back to 618. 618 is also low from there. So I'm going to put an alert. Then obviously if we should go further up, you can see there are levels here, daily highs. There's also something from here. We have to go back to a daily or weekly chart. This is running across. Let's just take a look at the weekly. This is the weekly. This is also a level that has never really been um, tested. Right? It's kind of vague a little bit to have that there, but um, should be respected nonetheless. So there is a bit of confluence here anyways um, in the, at around the same area. So we're going to put a alert here. Oh man, if it lets me. There it is. And then the 1414 is a little bit higher. Um, and then there's a there's a gap. But this is already at 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 the level where this whole pattern would be or this whole extension would be void basically. Last week's highest here, right? So you know, we, we basically got pretty close to that one already, but we haven't seen cross above it and above 1272. What we might get that at the open, maybe we'll see. There's also a good chance we might take out this high here. We are pretty close to it. Um, it might very well happen. Okay, so 618 down here, then these levels, I don't think we're going to see them today. There's also not much of a confluence. Do we see any harmonics here on hourly? No, this took out the high here. Otherwise, we could have drawn a nice triangle. But that is not what we are getting right now. Let's move on to the Dow. So this is just all about just extension plays. Oh, I see I have my alerts here. And it's all about extension from yesterday on either side. And we are looking for confluence, but there's nothing here. You see this? It's all naked. And all um, also the upside is, isn't that much. I mean, if you really want to force it, you can look at this low. Maybe we put a little bit of an alert here just to see what they do at the extensions as such. And then obviously there will be, there's a gap. So we want to look at the gap, the price action at the gap. And there's another gap down here. Oh, this is also a drawing from yesterday that was in there. So there's, there's a gap which we should also look at. Things are fairly tied together here, I would say. But downside, yeah. 
Well, then at 1414, if not earlier than that. And no confluence, really. And looking for any harmonic patterns, this is just all the way to chop. I don't see much there. Russell. Also drawing extensions. Did I anchor it properly? No. There it is. 618 would be here, but we've been sitting on the 50 for a while, so I don't know if, if that will do much. 1272 is here. There's, there's also this last week's lower sitting right there. So let's put the dot. And then here, 1414, here's a gap. We can put in a lot. There's another gap we can put in a lot. And they'll probably run out of a lot soon. 1272, yeah, we just put one there as well. Lower. That's another lot, I think. And then if you look at this down here, this is interesting. There's also some stuff coming across. I don't know exactly why I, why I drawn this. It's this level. I think this is more of a is that more of like a weekly thing. Oh, I didn't adjust it. I hate that. See, this is a weekly thing, right? There's there's a weekly coming across. Should probably name that accordingly. Weekly cross. Um, top right. Okay. And this is interesting, this level. So we're going to put an alert here as well. Let me just make sure they didn't mess up my other alerts for the adjustment. Hourly chart. So we're still 1272. We're still at the gap. So that looks okay. That looks fine. Okay, so we did the prep here. Any other thing with harmonic? I don't see anything. Let's take a look at a 15 minute chart. See if we have any harmonics in here. I don't see anything. We are obviously having a fairly friendly um, free market. I'm going to draw some levels while we're looking at the 15 minute chart of the daily open. I don't see anything to do here with harmonics. Um, also, not here, it's just a lot of chop. I don't see anything here. Um, let's draw midnight open. down there and then we do the 830 right away so, yeah. I don't really see a clean swing low here where we could just swing back uh, this is all just I don't know the Russell doesn't look that great let's draw the same thing here midnight and then 830 super close together and the price has been on either side of the midnight open, so that's not interesting. Midnight open here, 8.30 is all the way there. And there's no swing low. So where's midnight open is here. That's quite similar. The distance here is 92. To 65. Wow, that's a lot. So I would not take anything coming down here to maybe test this little swing, which is not really a swing because it's pre midnight open. Um, I would not take any setups based on that either. This is too much of a difference. So when they turn and come down, the chances are they're just going to go through and they're just going to go lower. Uh, you can see in terms of daily candle formation, a little bit of a wick down here. Not much. Also, fairly little wick here. YM is good on both sides, right? 
so in the size of candle basically and uh, basically here you also have a little bit of a wick but you know we might revisit this and it doesn't look that super strong right now in my book uh, okay so we are approaching the open in about 15 minutes so the only thing that is left to do is probably to look at some some more high volume stocks from yesterday that's trump's thing again i don't care about that this is an indian bank that's going the wrong way just like the whole country sorry to say i was watching a travel documentary about about india by an american guy uh, his channel is called uh, small brained american and he traveled through india pakistan and myanmar and all kinds of countries and he's probably the, the only or one of the few people who just say India just sucks. Like it's it's looks like Armageddon. Um, everything is broken. Um, it's totally totally overpopulated. And if you say that, even you know, I think proud Indian people will say, yeah, you're right. I mean, at face value, and this is just an ETF, so we don't care about that. At um, at face value, nobody cares about Manchester United, right? Um, Bitcoin is just, you know, whatever. So there's nothing here. So at face, at face value, you have to admit that India is just horrible. Um, and I think politics have completely failed in India in terms of population, curbing the, the population growth and uh, private proper infrastructure. And I, I don't even know how India wants to compete in the world when when your homeland looks like that. I know I have a lot of Indian viewers, so don't get that, you know, the wrong way. But um, that's just, that's just crazy, right? But hopefully over the next few decades, um, India will become like a more orderly country of so on and, you know, prosper. Let's hope that because people are wonderful in India. I mean, there are scammers and stuff, and yeah, we have scammers in other countries too. I mean, but uh, people are very interested in, in in foreigners in particular, and they're very warm people. And uh, yeah, anyways, let's take a look at some pre market stuff. But I can always say there's nothing. God, that's just. There's not much going on here. It's because if you you mana or something, that's that's really moving. The rest is nothing. Also, this this I think it's you mana. I would not be interested in that. This is why is this? What is it doing? Where's the free market here? Oh, there it is. Holy shit. That uh, went down pretty good. Do we have any one minute pre market? What this one looks like line view. Anything that can be connected in a very clean fashion? You could say yes. I guess if it breaks this line, then there might be more selling. But that's that's all I can say. This is this is a big, big capitalized company. It's a 56 billion market cap. Um, I don't know if you want to monkey around in that. And it's it's a high price stock. It's still trading almost 400, 400 bucks. But I'm going to put it on the list. Maybe you can learn something from it. Humana, I look at it during the day. All right, I think this is it. And I should probably prep myself a little bit for the market open. And I'm most likely going to record again today, an hour, maybe two hours, we'll see, and wait for some setups, All right? All right, guys, take care. Hope that was somewhat helpful and talk to you soon, bye.